I might have mentioned before that I don't watch much TV nowadays. There are tons of highly popular shows that I haven't got around to yet, so my list of favourites may not be as inclusive as it could be, but that's a list for another day. However, I did watch a lot of TV as a child, and there were quite a few shows that I really loved, so that's what I'll be looking back on today. We've all been through a nostalgic phase where we have an all-new respect for our childhood days. Of course, some of the things we loved back then we look on with scorn or ridicule now. I do not miss Teletubbies, Barney the Dinosaur, or Rugrats, for example. But for this list, I'll be looking at the shows from my childhood that hold up the best, the ones that still give me that warm, fuzzy feeling. Now, there are some genuinely great kid shows out there that are just as entertaining for adults, to which I can attest because I only saw them as an adult, but I'm choosing ones that I grew up with that are unmistakably intended for children, but that I can still appreciate now that I'm looking back on them as an adult. Some of these shows are still on today, but obviously I'm an old school fan. So get ready for the inner child in me to paint a big bright target on itself. These are my top 10 favorite nostalgic kid shows. Number 10, Super Ted. Looking back, I realize how absurd this idea is. I mean, just listen to the backstory that plays in the opening of every episode. A spotty man, a magic cloud, mother nature. If you'd never heard of the show before, you'd swear you were high listening to that. But like all good kids shows, it manages to turn this very silly premise into some pretty damn good adventures. It's also pretty funny how in every single episode, the villain is invariably Texas Pete. The whole show is basically a parody of comic book superheroes, and I think that's one of the satire's more subtle layers. Number 9, The Magic Roundabout. This is another one that just seems like it was inspired by an illegal substance. It has a very bizarre visual style, with white ground, brightly colored cardboard trees, and all the strange stop-motion characters. But the English dub, it was originally a French show, seems like it was written more with adults in mind than children, what with the level of vocabulary used and its dry sense of humor. So it's no wonder it has a dedicated adult fan base. Just the fact that the RAF actually named a squadron of aircraft after characters from the show is a testament to that. Number 8, Mr. Ben. This is one of the most intelligent kid shows I've ever seen, for the most part. It's about a man who visits a magic costume shop, and each costume he tries on leads to an adventure appropriate to that outfit. In every adventure, Mr. Ben is faced with some kind of problem that he has to use intelligence and logic to solve, be it a circus crew working together to cross a chasm, or outsmarting Indians in a game of hide-and-seek. Smart stories like this can only be good for children, so this is definitely a show I'd recommend to my own kids. Number 7, Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons. This is definitely among the darkest of Jerry Anderson's puppet-based shows. Right from the opening credits, they're far darker and less triumphant than contemporaries like Thunderbirds and Stingray. After all, the premise is an ongoing war with the ruthless Mysterons from Mars. It does have a few lapses in logic that only a child wouldn't question, but the music and special effects are top-notch, helped all the more by the puppets' heads being correctly proportioned to the bodies for the first time, making them look more human than ever before. Plus, the first episode gets my vote as the best opening episode of all time. Number 6, Fireman Sam. As the theme song says, firemen are heroes living right next door, and this animated show does a great job at letting kids know that. I especially love all the gadgets packed into the fire engine and how the firemen use them on the job. It's great how the characters are actually professionals, that sets a good example. Maybe the show doesn't accurately represent what a dangerous job firefighting is, but some episodes do get pretty intense as kids' shows go. Either way, these animated escapades are still cool to watch. Not to mention, it has possibly the catchiest theme song of all time. Number 5, Old Bear Stories. This is one that I really underestimated. Not only does it really hold up for me personally, I think it's one of the best kid shows ever made. It may not really have a plot to speak of, it's just the daily lives of these toys in the playroom, but the characters are what makes it worthwhile. 
I especially love the Christmas episode, where they aren't concerned about materialism like you'd expect, but instead they genuinely want to do something nice for others. Everything about this show is charming, and Anton Rogers as the narrator layers the whole thing in class and dignity. Number 4, Thunderbirds. This is one show that I just couldn't get enough of as a kid. It had action, gadgets, rockets, awesome vehicles, explosions, it was the ultimate combination of everything that boys love. Watching it today, it's still thrilling, though it is hilarious watching it in retrospect, especially how it's supposed to be set in 2065 and yet everything still runs on tapes. With all their advanced technology dedicated to saving people in perilous situations, it's hard not to root for the Tracy family. The special effects are so good that the crew apparently got offers from Hollywood. Plus, of course, there's Barry Gray's unforgettable theme music. Number 3, The Animals of Farthing Wood. Here's an animated show that really treated us like adults. Much like the film version of Watership Down, with which now that I think about it, it shares a very similar plot, it wasn't afraid to shy away from the cruelty of nature. These animals are on a long journey to find a new home, and innumerable dangers face them along the way. The show is dark, sometimes bleak, and occasionally violent, but it never feels gloomy. The animals all have distinct and appealing personalities, so we're always along for the ride, rooting for them, willing them to make it okay. Number 2, Postman Pat. This is another show that paints a very appealing image of a particular job, a familiar figure that people see every day. So why is it so high on the list? One reason. Postman Pat is funny as hell. I found plenty to laugh at as a kid, but there's even some humour that adults can laugh at too. The first series was obviously made on a very low budget, with jerky stop motion and one narrator also singing the theme song, but that just adds all the more charm to it. It just overall brings endless delight, and it's still one of my favourites. And my number one nostalgic kids show is... Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. This was quite possibly the first show I ever saw, and it was definitely the one that most dominated my childhood. I was downright obsessed with this show, and it was the show that triggered my nostalgic phase years later. I'm not entirely sure why, though. In many ways, it is the perfect kids show. It's bright and colourful, has well-written characters and sound morals. But aside from that, there's just something fascinating about focusing on steam engines. The Reverend Audrey said he wrote the original books because he used to live near a railway yard, and the engines always sounded like they were talking to each other. Here, that idea is taken literally. It's also really clever how, unlike Pixar's cars, the vehicles aren't the people in this world. They may be able to talk, but they still need crews to work them. It's worth mentioning that apparently the show is especially popular with autistic children, and yes, I'm on the spectrum myself, so it's probably no surprise that it holds such a special place in my heart that it takes the number one spot here. It's just an all-around wonderful kids show, and I'm glad it still continues to delight children even to this day. I should mention that most of these shows have been released on DVD. The only exceptions are the Magic Roundabout and Old Bear stories, which I think is borderline criminal. However, in Old Bear's case, there's an alternative. Jane Hissey, the author of the original books, has uploaded every episode to her YouTube page. I guess she holds the copyright. 